Tonight, a professor holds a talk about a marijuana legalization in Brandau. And Washington State University is no longer operating in a deficit. Marrow News 8 starts now. B on the campus of Washington State University. This is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Yolanda Lee. And I'm Sean O'Connor. Welcome to Murrow News 8. Psychology professor Rebecca Kraft says the support for marijuana legalization will continue upward According to DISA, recreational use of marijuana is legal in 12 states and medical use is legal in 34 states. Kraft says 50 years ago, 12% of Americans wanted weed legalized. Now, 64% are in favor. She says every state except one has some form of CBD legal and there have been more and more proposals to cut back federal regulations. Kraft also says tax marijuana sales have led to nearly $360 million in revenue. The gun debate is alive and well on campus. Less than a year after voters passed I-1639, the WSU police discontinued their firearm storage program. The program provided WSU students with a safe, legal place to store their guns. I-1639 requires advanced background checks to transfer firearms. According to the WSU police, the new transfer rules made the gun storage program too complicated to continue. The WSU Gun Club president, Jonah Ryan, aired his frustrations to the Daily Evergreen, stating that students that live on campus no longer have a legal place to store their guns. The president of WSU's Young Democrats, Hannah Martin, told the Daily Evergreen that she feels bad for those affected, but wonders if students need to have guns on campus. WSU has more money for 2019 fiscal year. According to WSU officials, the year began with $7.8 million surplus. The university is no longer using reserve funds for the first time in six years. The president, Kirk Schultz, says the officials ran, ranged from $25 to $30 million during 2014-2017 fiscal years. According to WSU Vice President Phil Will Weller, they are continuing to do the fiscal recovery and may take three years to help reduce the reserves. A new budget model is also under development. It will help make the uh, financial information more readily, readily available and accessible. Parking, like if they could, I don't know, build a huge parking garage somewhere near where we could park, that would be really great. But definitely I think that some of the buildings on campus need to be paid attention to. I agree with it going in reserves. Um, I think it's important that instead of just flying by the seat of our pants all of the time, that we actually create um, rainy day funds. Um, we have something to pay off deficits with. Um, and we just start creating a culture of having money instead of spending money. Former Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz says he is no longer considering a 2020 presidential run. Schultz says he is taking a detour from his presidential campaign due to health concerns. Schultz was running as an independent nominee. His run as an independent was reiterated on his website when he stated his withdrawal from the waste, saying, quote, Democrats and Republicans have consistently put party over country. Schultz says on his site, not enough people are willing to let an independent run for the presidency. With this being such a busy weekend on the Palouse, be prepared for something we don't see that much of, traffic. The Palouse Empire Fair in Colfax is going on this weekend alongside WSU and U of I home football games. Pullman Police and Palouse driver safety encourage everyone to pack their patients and stay away from distractions, especially on State Route 26 and US 195. Extra congestion can be expected on side streets and outlets. With the Kooks playing at 2 and the Vandals kicking off at 6, traffic can be expected to be steady all day on Saturday. A traffic revision will remain on Airport Road between Pullman and Moscow for the entirety of the weekend. 
A car chased through Idaho County landed on Middleton Man behind bars. According to KTVB, the chase began when Adams County Sheriff pursued a stolen car headed towards Idaho County. At 10 a.m. Tuesday, the suspect hijacked a vehicle, a vehicle after running over spec strips set by law enforcement. The chase made its way through Greensville, tr triggering lockdowns in air schools. The suspect was arrested without further incident around 8.35 a.m. The state of Washington has experienced fewer wildfires this season than what, what was initially expected. According to Fire Deputy Marshal Tony Nutman, wildfires this year were generally smaller and easier to control than the last few fire seasons. The Pullman Fire Department is now warning residents to not use fireworks when the area is dry and to pay attention to avoid any potential fires. An update on the WSU athlete arrested for vandalism. Former WSU football player Christian Hangana appeared in court Friday, August 30th. After being arrested early this year, Hangana and two other WSU athletes were arrested for vandalism in two cars back in April. There were around $5,000 in damage. Hangana's portrayal is, uh, portrayal is scheduled for October 3rd. Chief of Police Gary Jenkins tells the Daily Evergreen that the maximum sentence for the church is one year in jail and a $5,000 fine. The city of Spokane Mayor David Condon announced a 2019 budget that allows them to hire 10 new police officers and create new homeless programs. According to the KXLY News, Condon also granted $1 million to build a new homeless shelter and to hire 48 firefighters. 20, $92 million will go to cleaning the Spokane River and $227 million will go to street construction. When we come back, how local farmers are being affected by the United States and China's ongoing trade war. That when Murrow News 8 returns. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. I'm one on Lucky Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning... 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back. The ongoing trade war between the United States and China has impacted agricultural markets across the U.S. 
no schmick went to Edicott, Washington to see the impact of the trade war locally. In the small town of Endicott, Washington, Tyler Chapman lowers the cover over this grain elevator after a long day in the summer sun. Chapman has operated this grain elevator for four years and says he loves talking with local farmers day in. Oh, I love doing this. Eat, sleep, and breathe it. And day out. But Chapman also says he hears about all of the farmers' frustrations with the current wheat prices. It really is hurting the people because, you know, th this has been a local thing for years on end, and the whole operation system kind of just goes down, you know, and, and people, when prices go down, people struggle. A big reason for the drop in wheat prices stems directly from the ongoing trade war between China and the United States. Recently, China announced a boycott of U.S. agricultural products, and as a result, selling prices dropped, worrying farmers around the nation. It definitely makes us a little worried because, you know, if prices are going down, we're not making the money that, that we're supposed to, you know, and, if, you know, people might get let go because they're not making enough money and you can't support those employees. Now, the trade war between China and the United States has really hurt farmers here in Washington, especially those who harvest apples, cherries, and even wheat. Well, it's their living, and um, they're all just, a, you know, a really great bunch of, you know, people, you know, and the families, and, you know, they wish it would be higher. As for Chapman, he hopes the prices jump back up in order to ease the worries of local farmers. It all comes down to the farmers and at the end of the day and how they feel. Because if they're not being able to support their crops throughout the year, then they obviously aren't going to be able to afford to farm for the next year or, you know, the year after that. Reporting in Endicott, Washington, Noah Schmick for Murrow News Service. A former WSU student is behind bars after, after pleading guilty to extortion. 24 years old Kel Gomez pleaded guilty to five counts of second degree extortion in Whitman County. Superior Court Gomez allegedly used text message, Snapchat, and Tinder, Tinder to obtain nude photos of 29 female victims. He threatened to release the pictures if the victims did not do as he asked. Gumnet's sentence hearing is set for October 4th. He faced up to 28 months of jail term. Well, you don't need big bait to catch a big fish. 16-year-old Cole Abershear of Blaine, Washington set the record for the largest catfish caught in Washington state using just a worm. Abershear says it was the first time he had ever caught a catfish. The Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife says Abershear's, rec Abershear's record catch weighed 37.7 pounds and measured 42 inches. The previous record was set by Raj Kincaid with a 36-pounder 20 years ago to the day on September 6, 1999. It has been a week since Hurricane Doria ap appeared to the U.S. Atlantic, uh, Atlantic coast. Here is more update of Dorian. According to latest updates from AP, at least 30 people died after Hurricane passed in the Bahamas. Currently, Hurricane Dorian is approaching two coasts of South and North Carolina with a Category 1, 90 miles per hour of wind. South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster, McMaster announced that about 360,000 people in South Carolina evacuated from their homes. We have Gunnar Peterson over at the Weather Center. Gunnar, how are things looking out there? Hey, thanks guys. So uh, as you can see today, uh, everybody woke up. We saw a little bit of rain, a little bit of water on the ground. Definitely cooled down from the rest of the week. We got a high of uh, 74 here and a low of 55 with winds reaching up to 8 miles per hour. Sunrise was at 6.14 a.m. this morning and uh, sunset's going to be at 7.18 p.m. tonight. Going on to the uh, state map here, as we can see in Olympia, we had a high of 76 and a low of 55. Moving a little bit more to the east in Tri-Cities, you got 88 degrees on their high and 61 on their low. And uh, again, 74 in their high and 55 and low in Pullman. And then moving on to the five-day forecast. So we'll talk a little bit of more about uh, Saturday's uh, weather. Uh, Sunday, we're going to have a little bit of rain. 
um, coming in later in the day with a high of 63 and a low of 50. Uh, Monday, uh, we're going to have a high of 69 and a low of 48, uh, a little bit raining later in the day Tuesday with a low, with a low of 48 and a high of 69. And then finally, a uh, little bit more clear skies on uh, Wednesday there, uh, and a little bit cold morning with 49 degrees, but it'll reach uh, a temperature of 69. Back to you. Sounds like some great weather. Thank you, Logan. Stick or thank you, Gunner. Stick around because Logan Plant will have all of your local sports updates coming up next. We'll be right back. Did you check? You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. I'm one on Lucky Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning... 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get How some peanuts? How much they got allotted for me, though? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. The 22nd ranked Cougs continue their season tomorrow afternoon against Northern Colorado. Despite Northern Colorado's less than stellar reputation, Coach Leach isn't taking the Bears lightly. They do a lot of good things. I think they have a good scheme and, you know, the biggest thing we're concerned about is our improvement. We got to be better, you know, and so uh, we can control us. We can't necessarily control them, so we got to focus on us. The game kicks off tomorrow in Martin Stadium at 2 p.m. Speaking of Coach Leach and tomorrow's football game, Mike Leach might borrow some play ideas from his students' classwork. According to a story from 247sports.com, Mike Leach says he is not against using plays that his students made last spring in his own insurgent warfare and football strategies, strategies class that Leach taught with his friend, former Senator Michael Baumgartner. They made their students come up with plays that the team could run for this 2019 football season. The class's Twitter page retweeted the story, saying that they might use certain students' plays this year. A good friend of Mike Leach will also be teaching his own class at the university he heavily promotes. Matthew McConaughey will not only be the guest picker tomorrow morning on college game day for the Texas LSU football game, he will also be teaching a script writing and film class at the University of Texas at Austin. Mike Leach has been great friends with Matthew McConaughey for years. That all started with some friendly advice from Leach to McConaughey, telling him to swing his sword on his wedding night back in 2012. Now we still have Gunner over at the weather wall. Gunner, are things going to clear up before the game on Saturday? Thanks, Logan. So we are going to have a little bit of showers later in the evening, but luckily kickoffs at two o'clock and it's going to be about 81 degrees around that time. So tailgaters preparing for the game, you should be in the clear. Uh, it's going to be uh, another low of 58 tomorrow, which is probably going to be later in the evening with a 60% chance of precipitation. Back to you guys. Thanks for the update, Gunner. 
The WSU volleyball team defeated Utah State three sets to one in the first game of the Portland tournament this morning. Pia Zimmer led the way with 17 hits, and Alexis DeRiggi locked it down on the defensive end with 17 digs. The Cougs are back in action tonight against Portland. That game starts at 7 p.m. The WSU women's soccer team took the Pac-12's top-ranked offense up Highway 195 last night. After scoring at least four goals in each of their first four games, the Cougs and Gonzaga were locked in a scoreless tie through regulation. It didn't take long into the overtime period, just 12 seconds, for WSU to finally get on the scoreboard. Senior Avery Collins scored on a 25-yarder to seal victory over the Bulldogs. The ball kind of just came to me. They kind of tried to clear it, bad clear. Um, ran at them. Honestly, I was looking for Mo up the left side. They never stepped, and it's kind of one of those things where it just slows down in front of the net. I can't really replay it in my head, but yeah, I just looked up, took the shot with my left foot, and it went in. The Cougs return home with a 5-0 record as they get ready to host Michigan in the Cougar Classic one week from today. The NFL's 100th season kicked off last night in Chicago as the Bears faced off against the Green Bay Packers. The NFL will offer fan experiences for the league's centennial season, including 100 new shows and a new charity, Huddle for 100. The league will celebrate as teams try to capture Super Bowl 54. The Packers won the opening game last night in a defensive slugfest, 10-3. The Seahawks will start their season Sunday in Seattle against the Cincinnati Bengals. The two teams last met in 2015, where the Bengals won 27-24 in overtime. Sunday's game will be the regular season debut for a number of new Hawks, including defensive end Jadavion Clowney and second-round draft pick DK Metcalf. The game kicks off from CenturyLink Field at 1.05 p.m. MLB pitcher Brian Moran's first strikeout victim in the majors was his brother. The Miami Marlins pitcher finally made his MLB debut after a 10-year tour in the minor leagues. The Marlins played the Pirates Thursday night, where Brian's younger brother, Colin, has played for the last two seasons. When Colin stepped into the batter's box and struck out, it marked the first time in MLB history that a pitcher struck out his brother in his Major League debut. No hard feelings, though. Colin told MLB Network there are a million reasons why that strikeout was special. When we come back, how a WSU student is using drones to study salmon. We'll be right back. Since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. I'm one on Lucky Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning... 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. A criminal wanted for 11 counts of first-degree assault is behind bars. Yesterday, Spokane SWAT teams 
and other police force went to a home on Garden Avenue to arrest Modesto Briggs. Police, police asked Briggs to leave his house multiple times before they eventually left his home and peacefully surrounded nearby Longfellow Elementary School, was temporarily placed in lockdown during his arrest. Briggs was involved in a drive-by shooting that happened near the Northern Mall on May 16th. A Spokane organization works to give people more smiles. According to, the Smile, according to Smile Spokane, the organization is trying to help local residents have better dental health. More than 30% of adults and about 60% of third grade students in Spokane have tooth decay. The organization recently received a $200,000 grant from the Acora Foundation. The Interfraternity Council to no, long, to no longer recognize the Gamma Mu chapter of the Kappa Sigma Fraternity due to an alcohol-related incident last fall. The fraternity will remain unrecognized until fall of 2024. An investigation into the incident is ongoing. Despite being unrecognized, Gamma Mu can still host events. WSU graduate student Daniel Auerbach is using, uh, is using a drone to monitor summer Chinook salmon to help the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife. Our bar, our Bach is focusing on monitoring salmon spawning in area, spawning areas to get accurate data for his research and to provide updated information of salmon populations. He says using drones is becoming more common for these types of research projects and is more effective to keep track of populations. He's planning to keep researching salmon populations after he earns his master's degree. Some more of campus housing could come to Pullman where it's located, and what it will cost when Muro News 8 returns. No more pencils, no more books, no more teachers, dirty looks. School's out for summer. What this place needed was better graduation rates, so we worked with schools like Henry Ford High, and now they're up 18%. To help us do more good this year, go to unitedway.org because great things happen when we live united. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. New off-campus housing for WSU students could be on the way. Student housing developers Aspen Heights look to purchase 25 acres of land in the poem the, in the Pullman Industrial Park, south of Pullman Albion Road. The initial cost 